<clears throat> oh, it's 10.59. It's getting close. <laughs> huh. So you have to refrain from trying to talk too much before 11. <clears throat> All right. Yay. It's 11 a.m. So you know what time that is. It is Watercolor World Watercolor Month, day number 16. Yep, you heard it right. 16. <laughs> I can't do 16 on just 10 fingers. But um, so welcome, everybody, to the Moon and the Maker. It's my studio and headquarters of Rubber Moon Art Stamps. And you know, this whole month, we're celebrating Watercolor World uh, World Watercolor Day, in, what, what, uh, World Watercolor Month, and by doing a watercolor a day. So um, I've just been sharing tips and techniques and hopefully inspiration for splashing your stamps and, um, you know, experimenting with watercolor. So um, today, well, I'm going to say it again. I cannot believe it's already day 16. And um, so today we're going to do something a little bit different um, and create some fun background patterns using watercolors and stamps. Now, the, this is in my journal, um, and it most of them are not done with stamps. Only this one here has some stamps on it. Um, so I'm going to kind of show you a little mixture. And I, I will pull out yesterday's uh, demo because yesterday I was not live. I actually pre-recorded um, because I had to be out of town for the day. So I hope that you all got a chance to see day number 15 because I still went ahead and posted for day 15 a pre-recorded video. And this was from day 15 using this stamp, which is called KP's Pick. And so that was yesterday's. So today I think we're going to stick with sort of a florally theme or at least, well, backgroundy. And we're going to do tone on tone. I am using 300 pound watercolor paper, cold press. So it does have a little bit of texture to it. Because remember, hot press is smooth. Just think of hot being like an iron and being smooth. And then cold uh, giving you goose goosebumps and giving some texture to the paper. So 300 pound is uh, pretty much the heaviest. I think you can actually get 400 pound, but it's very difficult to even find. So 300 pound um, is your heaviest weight. And I'm working on pieces that are cut to three by four inches, just a little bit larger than an ATC size card, um, just for fun, because I think it's a nice manageable size, but you can do whatever size that you want, or of course, even work in a journal. I know that Emily has been here with us pretty much every day, and she's been doing beautiful work in a journal, so I hope that you will play along. Um, or I shouldn't call it play. It is play, and it's also work, so I hope that you get to get makey along with me. Um, here I have, I was going to do just a couple um, different little variations on the theme. And again, I was um, kind of using this for my inspiration to share with you today on how to create wonderful backgrounds um, and uh, sort of tone on tone. Now, not all of these are tone on tone. Um, some of them have a few other, you know, they're not completely monochromatic. Like this one here has a couple other colors mixed in. This one, I started with the yellow wash and built a little bit of uh, oranges and um, pinks across the top. This one, I guess, would mostly be considered really tone on tone because you just have a light pink wash and then pink, uh, the same pink actually for the layers. Same with this one. So it's really just, um, you know, how 
dark you build your your washes, how much uh, value that you give them. So um, anyway, here I have my three by four cards already painted, or I really like to call this just kind of a stain. I really just stain the first, uh, you know, the paper with a really light wash, um, a layer of light wash and let it dry. And the trick is if you want to um, stamp or uh, do any any hard edge lines across the top, then you need these to be very dry, okay? So if you want um, more of a washy, like wet on wet look, um, or you know, not as hard of lines, you can do some of your first little, uh, or oh, I should say second layer, because I would consider this the first layer, and then anything you build on top of that, you can, um, you know, do it when the paper's still a little bit wet, but again, you won't get hard lines if you do that. <clears throat> so here I have a couple different stamps. I have this, um, this one's called Muntis Garden, and it's, um, the reason it's called that is because it's obviously a takeoff on Matisse's sort of patterns. And then here I also have a Mindy Lacefield um, word stamp, and this um, one says, make uh, beautiful, wild, crazy mistakes. Um, thinking is overrated, chaos is necessary, let go of the outcome, trust your heart. So I love this saying, but I also love her sort of scratchy font, or I don't really know, her her crazy sort of handwriting, and I think it'll make a really fun tone-on-tone -tone background. Hi, Emily, I think, were your ears burning? I was talking about you <laughs> in a good way, though. And let me just go ahead and say good morning to everybody. Um, since we just have a few people so far popped on here with us, I'm going to say hi to Tracy, Deborah, Karen, and Libby, and Emily. Welcome, and thank you again for being here. Um, so um, I'm going to go with this one first, this kind of tealy. And I just gave it a little quick wash in the background. Um, I'm going to do one for you just so you can see, wouldn't matter what color, but I'm going to get uh, my brush pretty wet and I am just using my flat shader. I could use any of the brushes, but I'm gonna go ahead and dip in. You can see this is already pretty watery. I do have my other, my little glass palette over here. If I wanted to mix up some colors so I just didn't have that straight, uh, you know, cobalt teal. If I wanted a little color mixture, I have a little bit of green here on my palette so I could, I could do a light wash. Of, you know, and you can see how watery and thin that is. It's barely any pigment on my brush at all. But if I want it to be a little more tealy, I'll just, I just blended those colors, okay? And then I'm just gonna quickly put a very wet wash down and it's really light. But again, to stain that beautiful white paper does not take much at all. Um, and again, this will just be the, the very, very background layer. And then, so I would just let that dry and um, that could probably take, uh, you know, I didn't get it super, super wet and it's a really small surface. So I would probably wait maybe, oh, 20 minutes or something like that. You want it to be really good and dry, okay? And so now I'm gonna go ahead and take my uh, Muntis Garden Stamp and I have a little bit of teal paint. I don't, I don't know if you can really see it. It's a different color of teal. It's here and it's pretty dry, okay? so my my brush is really barely moistened. I might add a tiny bit more water, just again to kind of get that moving, but I want um, a pretty, oh, you know, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I want a pretty generous layer of paint on my brush, and nothing um, too wet. And I know a few of you that have tried this have said it's a little bit tricky, and you know, it does. It takes a little time to get used to, you have to work quickly, and you know you want you know a decent layer of paint on there that's not too wet because if you make it too wet, it's just going to blob out all over. And we'll do it one more time. I don't know if I love that color on there or not, but it's fine. I I like to do little gradients and color mixtures, so. one more time and only a little part of this is or well let me just load that up and turn it around and there there you can see I have my little 
pattern on there. And now I'm going to just take another wet brush, my number four round. Again, this is great if you want to create backgrounds, if you want to do your journal page. And you can, of course, dip into the same or a little bit different color and sort of smush some of that around just so you get some of those, um, you can see where it's sort of, you know, the paint sort of pulled up on there. So if you wanted to give it a few little smushes and you could even maybe pull in a different color. I think some green gold would be really pretty and you just kind of can overpaint that. I'm pulling in some green gold just because I really, I really just want to. <laughs> and that's the fun thing about experimenting like this is that you can do, and especially if you're working on these small little bits of paper, you can really do what you want to do and not feel too intimidated, you know, by, by experimenting. You're not feeling like you're going to mess up some big masterpiece or that you're ruining, you know, tons of great paper and stuff like that. It really, I think it really frees you up to, um, you know, make the mistakes that you need to make in order to learn. So I'm working pretty wet and I'm just dropping in color right on top of those. And again, if you wanted it to be monochromatic or really just tone on tone, then you wouldn't drop in those other colors. But sometimes I really just can't help myself. But again, if you wanted to just stick with making it that monochromatic sort of tone on tone look, then you would just stick with the same color and paint these babies up. But you know me, I love to layer. So um, as long as I have all these colors at my fingertips, I'm just going to go with it. And the other thing, like right now, I don't know if you saw that I sort of went outside the shape so if that happens, okay, then just go with it and reshape it. You don't, you, again, just like always, I don't necessarily want things to just look real stamped on there. Um, so if you end up sort of recreating some of the shapes, uh, you know, all the better. Some of these still look a little dark, so you could even and on um, like on my uh, little sample. Let me get back to the sample page here. Um, you can see some of these. Well, most all these were hand painted on here, but um, a lot of times when I do stamp, I will actually take, you know, get this other brush. Um, you know, color even like the like my base color, and actually just give the whole thing a little smoosh and you could paint over this entire thing or even just in sections of it and get sort of more that batiki, you know, sort of washy look. And I love that too. So don't, you know, you don't have to feel like you're just blocked into keeping anything the way that it is if you don't really like it. I didn't like some of those harsher lines. So I just want to put a little wash over this whole thing. Um, of course, I could let it dry again and then continue on a third layer, maybe with putting in some other, you know, mark making or painting over. So I'll, I'll set this aside and let it dry while we go on to maybe this pink one here. And I'm going to stamp this these words. Now, again, you know that when you paint um, and stamp with watercolor, a lot of times you're not getting a perfectly wonderful impression. You're not going to maybe get it really crisp and all the lines, or especially for text or words, you might not get them all perfectly. I really, I sort of want to stamp this in the background um, just so it is messy and so you can sort of see a little you know, bits of words, but I'm not necessarily after it to be perfectly crisp and legible. And I'm right now, um, I had done a light, light wash of uh, quinacridone magenta. 
And now I'm using quinacridone magenta sort of straight. Um, and again, not very watery. It's a pretty strong color, so it should be good. And see, I kind of, I really like that. <clears throat> I, I could really just leave this just like that and actually love it. Um, a great, again, for a background um, on a greeting card or in a journal. Um, or, you know, I might even use this in the background of, an, of a painting, of a full-on painting. If I wanted to sort of deepen my edges just a little bit or, you know, give it some different... Looks like I could easily still give it some fun washes just by adding a little water. And maybe blotting, because I'm just thinking like I like sort of that real, I don't know, messy, washy look. So I think, again, just such a simple thing, but really, really fun. I like it a lot. Okay, so this one's still drying. It's still pretty wet, so wouldn't go in and do anything with that quite yet. Let's work on our yellow one. And um, I'm going to grab one, one more stamp. Oh, no, wait. Do I have it here? No. Let me grab a stamp. So this is the bitty, itty bitty blooms or itty bitty buds or so, uh, something like that. <laughs> and um, it's just three little dot flowers, basically. I think we worked with this one earlier um, in the month. And I have a little bit of Indian yellow over here in my palette, which is sort of like an, or I don't know, sort of an orangey yellow. I'm going to use it. Oops, I got a little too watery. Actually, this one on the, um, oh, that Joan, Joni Hallmark stamp that I did of the two, the little couple of sugar skull people. Uh, anyway, I can't remember the name, of course, but I used a similar technique um, on that whole card. And remember, I could be alternating colors, too. So if I didn't want to do all the yellows in that Indian yellow, then maybe I go ahead and take a little of my Benzie yellow here, switch it up a bit. And some are more blobby than others, and that's okay, too. And then, so for this one, I really just took my, um, and I think that Indian yellow might be a little strong, but it's okay. I'm, I can just give them some little smushes of color here and there too. Get a clean paper towel. I feel like I need to blot some of this. And I'm just adding, you know, just some little random splotches um, with, a, with my other shade of yellow. And then I'm going to go in. I, on this one, sort of like the sample, I want to use maybe just a hint of pink and a hint of green. But it's so pale you can barely see it but it does add just a little again really I want it really pale I I don't want it to be very strong I'm using just a little bit of sort of a sage green that's sort of mixed on my palette here 
And again, really, really washy. I don't know if you can see how thin and light of washes I'm actually using. If I feel it's too strong, I'll just blot it up a tiny bit and then just keep going really randomly, just some little marks. I guess sort of leafy looking, I don't know. And then we'll grab a tiny bit of washy pink also. I don't know, I'm not really liking this shade of pink on here that much, but. I think one of the reasons is because I don't like that orange that I, or that darker Indian yellow that I put down. It's just a little sort of brownie yellow that I'm not grooving on, on top of this bright yellow. A bit of pink, seeing if I can sort of save this at all. Uh, well, I'm going to set this aside too because I think I'm going to do a little bit more mark making on that one. And I just, I don't know, it can come together, but I really don't like the colors. But it definitely just needs a little more layering. And I might put another stamp in there because sometimes, you know, they'll just flow together so much quicker and more easily. And then sometimes you just do one thing like, like put down the color maybe that you don't really like and then you have to fuss with it or struggle with it a little bit more. This isn't quite all the way dry, but um, okay, I'm going to try. Oh, I don't know, a couple different things just to bring it back around. It's not bad. I mean, this would be an okay background for something, but it's not. You know, like I think these all look much cuter and softer and fun. This one's kind of, I don't know, I don't like the gra the graininess, which I think is the actual paint. So that's where maybe you could go in and maybe just use those as little backgrounds now completely. And I have more of an opaque paint on my brush. and just use those little patterns that I already have there as my little backdrop and fill them in. Actually mixing color up over there, I have a combination of what I used for the base layer and um, this cobalt, or I'm sorry, uh, goodness, uh, teal, cobalt teal. And that'll start to come together. And I think I'm going to go ahead and even put in some, just some other little light washes. So I'm going to water it down just a little bit more and maybe just give some little 
dots. Dots always seem to pull things together and make everything look better. I don't know why, but it seems to work. <laughs> And of course, we'll let that dry and look at it again, but I think it's pretty cute. And then this one, I'm also going to take a couple other stamps. I definitely feel like I need my burst stamp. And possibly this little dashing too. Burst makes everything look better. <laughs> it just does. And I think I'm going to... Oh goodness. Well, I think I'm just going to use yellow again. We're going to try it. I'm, I think more than anything, I'm just not that happy with that other yellow color. So I'll build up a little more with this brighter yellow, but I feel in order to really save this little piece, um, I may have to throw in some other color. Ah, it's, I'm feeling green. I'm feeling some green on this. Uh, I could be wrong, but we're going to try it. Hmm. <laughs> decisions, decisions. Hey, Puff, you made it. I just looked up and I saw you here. It's great to see you and have you here. I hope your move is going well. Or at least I know moving is so hard. So I can't really say that, you know, going as well as hoped or anticipated, let's say. Now I'm going to smush some of my little dots that I just laid down just so they're not all perfectly the same. Oh, goodness. And I still really don't know. I'm still sort of nervous -y about the color, but I'm going to just go for it. I'm going to pick some sap green and just mix it with a little bit of what I have in the center of my um, palette here, which is, a, I don't know, a mixture of like yellows and a little bit of that cobalt teal. And I'm just going to use that and hope that my, my hunch is correct. I don't know though. Let some of it out. I mean, I kind of like it. I think I could just keep going on this one and maybe. Uh, maybe a little bit more in the oranges. I think it just all has to do with turn is pretty cute, but so I'm going to throw in some orange here. I think I was just trying too hard to keep it monochromatic. I didn't like that first bit of color that I laid down. So I'm just going to go in with some of that nice transparent pyrrol orange and deepen my edges, which is another little trick that I like to use that I feel sort of brings things together and um, you know just can help uh, sort of rectify a piece and of course you know my center is open so that I could easily put in an image or you know um, stamp over the top or even paint something there if I wanted to or put a sentiment so here and let's see, we've been on 28 minutes and we created three ones. And let me, I'm gonna set them on top of this because I think that looks kind of cute. Ta-da! Yay, so I hope you had a great day number 16 for watercolor or world, <laughs> I can never say it right, World Watercolor Month. Um, I hope you 
got to learn something or um, at least be inspired a bit. Um, I'm really super duper excited for day 17 because, well, I'm really excited every day. Um, and, oh, I don't know. I don't think I have anything really super new and exciting to share with you just yet, but I promise I will soon. <laughs> and, um, oh my goodness. I just want to thank you all for being here again. And I hope that you get to go and celebrate World Watercolor Day by creating and getting makey yourself. Um, I hope you have a beautiful day. Mwah. Thank you so much for being here. And I will see you tomorrow. Same time, same Mooney channel. Oh, and also, if you haven't sus subscribed to Rubber Moon TV, please do and share away. I really hope that you are enjoying World Watercolor Month as much as I am. See you tomorrow.